Hi everyone and welcome to the start of a new video series uh, looking into the Niagara system and how you can use it to create particle effects. Now this goes sits alongside the original particle system called Cascade uh, but it does come with some new bells and whistles. So I thought it would be good to start things off by introducing how it works and by recreating the fireball particle we made in Cascade um, all, that, all that time ago. So here I've imported in my hexagon uh, texture and I made a material out of it. Quite basic, it's just multiplied by particle colour and particle alpha to give us the opacity and emissive colour. Okay, Nothing out of the ordinary there. So to start with Niagara, we need to make a system. So go to Add New, FX, and you've got a new Niagara system. And I'm going to choose to Create Empty System. And I'm going to name this one Fireball N. And alongside your Niagara system, you also need emitters. Because when we open this up, it's it's pretty much empty. All we have are the general parameters for the actual system itself. Um, which there's not much stuff really could do there. So we need to make an emitter that works for this. So go to add new FX Niagara emitter. And I'm going to go new emitter from template and choose an empty one. Hit finish. And this will be my fireball E. Okay, for emitter. So open up that emitter up and you can see where you can customize your emitter here in its own sort of settings here. The benefit of doing it here is that you can then apply this to other systems that use the same emitter. So rather than trying to duplicate the code, you can just make one emitter and apply it instantly to other particle systems. So as I said, you can do it here or on the system itself, we can add an emitter by right clicking, add emitter, fireball and you can customize it here. But if you change it here, it doesn't affect the original emitter here. Okay. So I'm just going to work all in the Niagara system itself in here. So this is the emitter and, uh, and here you can see the various settings available to it. And it's done in a particular order. So from top to bottom, that's sort of the order of precedence that it has when generating the particles. So at the bottom there, we've got Sprite Renderer, and this is what the actual render of this particle at the end is going to be. So by default, we've got these little gradients, uh, but we'll be changing that to our hex in a moment. But first, let's get to actually spawn something. So the first thing you do is go up to where it says Emitter Spawn. Click on this, and then choose the Add icon to add a new uh, property. And in here, we're going to do Spawn Rate. Now, spawn rate, you can see you're getting a little message, little message here. And it's basically saying reposition this in the correct order related to emitter state. So basically, it wants to be part of the emitter update because it's a spawn rate type. So if you click fix issue, it'll move it to the correct location there. So with that done, we can then change the value here. I'll change it to 10. And that's spawning 10 particles. They're not moving, they're just spawning on top of each other. So to make a move, we need to add velocity velocity to them. So you can do it in the spawn or update. So I'm going to go to spawn here. And we're going to go for velocity. And we're going to do add velocity. And here we're going to type in a value in x, y, or z. I'm going to do minus 10 in the x. And you get a little stream of particles. Okay. Um, let's up that a bit, actually. Let's do minus 25. Okay, and let's say, for example, we want this to be a range, a random in a range. Well, you go to where it have a values, and this is true for most stuff that you have in the emitter. If you go to the values here, click the little arrow, drop down arrow next to them, and they can add a, um, a different way of entering that data. So if I type in here, um, uniform, and I see uniform range vector, I can enter a min and a max value to get what I want. So my minimum here is going to be minus 10 in the X and my maximum is going to be minus 30 in the X and Y zero Z zero. So now you get a trail of varying speeds in your particle system. 
So now I want my emitter to change its size at the start and make it fade out to uh, the small then to nothing over time. So what we're going to be using is you can use either particle spawn or particle update. Now particle spawn means it will change the setting right at the very start of the particle's life whereas particle update will change that value over the lifespan of that particle. So if you click on the, where it says initialize particle you'll see sprite size set to 5 and 5. If I change this to say uh, 10 and 10 you can see it's now bigger at the start okay uh, but notice that it's changed the same size the whole way through that's because we haven't changed it to, told it to change its size yet in the particle update so in the particle update I'm going to click on here on the A plus go to where it says scale in the size section and do scale uh, sprite size like so so to make it change its over time, we're going to click on the arrow to the right, go to dynamic inputs, and we're on the vector 2D from curve. Choose this, and now you should see it goes from full size to nothing. And you can change this on the graph however you like, um, totally up to you. So let's go now add color to this. So let's be on particle spawn, and uh, actually, no, let's do a particle update. For doing a particle update, we'll click the add button. Go to where it says color and choose color. And we're going to click on the little downward arrow next to it to change its value to a curve. Uh, so if I go color from curve, and you now got this little gradient tool come up. So the top right row here is for the color, bottom is for the alpha. So by default, you see it's going from white to nothing. You can see it fading out here. So I'm going to change this color here by double clicking to more of a red. And the final color is going to be a yellow. And I'm going to put in between there an orange. And it's very similar to things like Photoshop and things like that where you can customize the way it's going to look like so. And I'm going to leave that as is. Excellent. Now let's go down to where we've got sprite renderer. So let's change it from now from a default sprite material to our one. So I'm going to go hex and do hex M. And now you can see my hexagon shape doing its thing. Okay. Which is very similar to the um, one we looked at in the cascade system. So one thing I might do on here is add a extra emitter on there so that these have a bit of vari variation at start. Actually, let's do the variation at start on here. So I go on particle spawn, click on plus, and let's, not plus, sorry, uh, go to initialize uh, particle. And where's the sprite size, 10 and 10? We're gonna click on that, and we're gonna go dynamic, dynamic input, sorry. And we're going to do a, um, uh, 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 Vector 2D from float. And then from there, we've used a float value where it says 1. We're going to click on that again, to the right hand side. Go down at inputs and do, do a uh, uniform range float. And this is a random value between these two values. So minimum will be, say, let's do uh, 5. Maximum is going to be 10. And now you get this. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to change that a little bit here. So minimum is 8. There you go. So now you've got a slight variation in size when they are spawning in. So what about if we duplicate this now? So if I take this uh, emitter here, right click on it and copy and then paste that in. I've now got two emitters doing the same thing, overlapping each other. Uh, but what I can do with this one is I can change its initial particle size here to something like uh, to 16 and to do 20. But my lifespan for this is gonna be a lot shorter, so let's do uh, two seconds for this. Okay, we now got this effect coming through our game. 
hit save and now we can close that and if I drag my system into the world we will see our fireball and there we have it our first Niagara particle system now Niagara is really powerful it has loads of settings available to you to change things and be more dynamic with it so we'll be covering these in future videos over the next few months if you want to get access to these videos before everyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash ryanlaley where a donation of just one dollar will get access to all of those videos before anyone else plus many other benefits. Big thank you to all of my patrons for their support and YouTube, my YouTube members as well. If you're watching this and you have yet to click that subscribe button, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below telling me what you'd like to see next from the Niagara system. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.